Khalil Mack. He is a game wrecker. This is what happens. If I'm the tackle, first sack, coach, I got to be better. I'm sorry, man. Dude, I'll get it next time. I promise you, I got him. What about the second one? Second sack, this guy's really good. I don't know, man. I don't know if I can do this. Third sack, I am furious. What the f- are we doing? Why are we just letting this guy get running? Like, what are we doing, coach? I'd be furious if I'm the tackle. I would be so mad. Welcome back to New Heights, ladies and gentlemen, presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment and also presented by the all-new Experience Smart Money debit card. Mm. The debit card that builds credit without the debt. That's so smart. Ah, why did it take us so long to get to this point? Experian, thank you for that. Well done, We are your Experian. host. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason. New episodes drop every Wednesday during the NFL season, so subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get those podcasts. And follow the show on all social media platforms at New Heights Show with one S. Jason, tell the people what we got coming up. You're not going to believe this, but we got another great episode. Oh, that's right. We're going to get to our week four nail biters. Of course, answer uh, all of our 92 percenters and new 92 percenters. Uh, no dumb questions. And um, yeah, we're going to try and figure out uh, if the NFL is doing maybe a little bit too much. What do you mean? Well, we'll get to it. All right. But first. As always, new news. New news coming in. I'll tell you what. I might have to jump off this new news with this uh, beautiful blue jersey that I have on. Oh, Um, there we go. Probably one of the. Get right to it. More interesting things. I think everybody uh, watching is probably. Yeah, dying probably, to know why you're wearing a why I'm wearing a beautiful BYU. 87 jersey from BYU. That's right. That's Brigham Young right there. How about uh, that? Shout out to Check. <laughs> we had a uh, a good gentleman's bet. In the locker room or really in the entire facility because we got a handful of BYU guys and a couple UC fellas. It was an even line just about the entire uh, entire week. So we just went with uh, the winner loss. Straight up. Um, just right. straight up. And uh, sure enough, Cincinnati lost by seven. So my bet was if I lost, I had to wear a BYU jersey on the show. And of course, if they lost, uh, they all had to drink a beer with me. Oh, wow. So they didn't have to wear a jersey. <laughs> I'm kidding. They didn't That's agree it? to that. They didn't agree to that. <laughs> Uh, but I did bet him. I was like, you got to come to a Vegas pool party with me at least. But they will go to that. They would go to that. They were, they were up for that. Yeah. So they're down to go to the pool party, but not to drink a beer. Yeah. No. Well, I don't no, know. No, I almost had him. I almost had him. Once you go to a Vegas pool bar, you're just like, you don't right, know what you're one. about to see at that Vegas pool party now. Um, <laughs> this bet took place on team premises. No, no, it did not. I, I thought you just said. When you were just talking, you said Mm-mm. at no, the facilities, I said you guys made the bet. There was a few people in the facility that go to BYU. I never said oh, it happened in the facility. Because as you know, betting on league facilities is strictly forbidden. So you that's be, why we didn't do it. We did okay, it over perfect. text when we okay, all were out of sure. the building. Just Okay, that's smart. That's a good way. All right, well, um, well, you look great in it. I'm not going to lie. I would say this jersey might have been worn. This might be a game worn jersey because you know guys guys when it's too tight on their arms they they cut the corners there and these corners are cut so I don't know if I just if I just took this off a guy's back from being in the game they threw my name on it how did they get your name on it that quick <sighs> that's those fast Mormons, those Mormons work in mysterious ways man hey well, yeah when you don't drink or go to Vegas pool parties <laughs> you got a lot of time on your hand. <laughs> Way to go. Yeah. Way to go, BYU. Yeah. All right. I was walking around the facility today and had yeah. a few guys mention that, oh, I heard you're going to be wearing the jersey. I'm just like, damn, that word spread quick. I heard Chad Lewis, <laughs> legendary BYU guys, excited about it. And Eagle. Big Did time Andy say anything Eagle about at the it? tight end. Yeah, no, he mentioned it. He mentioned it. He said, I heard you're wearing this jersey. I'm just like, damn it, they're making. Dude, you got to. You You'll see it, big guy. I'll wear it with pride. I'll wear it with pride. BYU. Shout out to BYU for getting the dub. Cincinnati, let's go, baby. Come on. Let's get back on the train, baby. You see? You got a BYU jersey and an Andy Reid mustache. This is a quite the scene. All right. <laughs> Let's get to the other new news. New Heights is officially the number one podcast on Apple, Spotify. I think just about every podcast uh, network at this point. That's crazy, man. Uh, we are officially on the map. Both Travis and I have officially we are been on put on the, the map. map. Just when you think you were s- skating away from it. We have also reached 1 million followers on our Instagram account. Damn. Thank you to everyone who tuned in to our regular episode and our Stone Cold Jones Man, special guest episode last week. That was a All fun of one. the 92 percenters, the new 92 percenters. Yeah. Nothing out of the ordinary from week three 
So can't uh, really explain why the the boost in viewership, but we appreciate all you guys tuning in. Appreciate you guys. Do we have any favorite moments uh, from the Chris Jones episode, Trev? I mean, I just, yeah, me getting called Malibu's Most Wanted might be the the funniest shit um, I've heard in a long time. Dude, T, and then somebody put in uh, the uh, one of the comments I saw from one of the fans. 92% ran with it. That's why we love the 92%. Instead of B Rad, it was T Rav. <laughs> I think that might be the new nickname. (laughs) T-Rev! Don't be hating. Don't be hating. Yeah. um, You got to love the Tyreek Hill trash talk, though, man. That's always fun. Tyreek actually, uh, what did he do? He responded with the, um, I'm 195 now. I got that South Beach weight now. Uh, After um, Chris Jones was talking about he's just too light. (laughs) And he weighs 140 pounds. He got little man syndrome. That uh, that I'll tell you what, man. Being down there in South Florida, man, you train down there, and that the weight is coming off. Yeah, there's it's no, definitely gonna. There's no running from that. It's gonna affect you. What about you? What was your favorite part? My favorite part was the whole thing. It was hilarious. Chris is hilarious. Um, you know, I've never really talked in depth with Chris that much. I've only really talked to him after games. So to get to know him, his personality, see how funny he is, really, really enjoyed just talking to him. The 40 story, obviously, I think stole the show. Well, let's keep this thing moving and get the fan mentions of the week out right now. This is something uh, you've all been commenting on for the past few weeks, and it's uh, it's about time we finally addressed it. Jason, what's up? What the fuck is going on with your microphone, dog? Do you try and wash that and it like just gets all the lint and the hairballs on it, or is it just the is filthiest thing ever? Yeah, we have a lot of comments Talking about how you just have lint and dirt all over your shit. Look at you. You didn't even pull the right thing off. <laughs> That's disgusting. From Mr. Crawford 87 is anyone else wanting to clean the windscreen cover on Jason's microphone? First of all, I had no idea. That's what these things are fucking called. Is that what this is? Yeah. A windscreen cover. Uh, I guess um, it's supposed to block the wind. I mean, let me tell you this. If you think this is dirty, you should see the rest of my house. If you obviously haven't talked, watched the documentary, if you think this is bad, because uh, got some dirt in there. Okay, I think I got it. I think I got just about everything. I don't know if there's something wrong with my screen, but you did definitely did not get that. I think I got it all. Everything. Yeah, I got it. Oh boy. Good for you, man. If you guys think this is bad, you should have seen our dorm room when we lived together at Cincinnati. It was... Whew, Oh, my God. I think when we were moving out, um, we for, like legitimately found a full pizza box under one of the beds that still had pizza in it, if I'm not mistaken. And it wasn't yeah. my bed. I'm just going to say it wasn't my well, bed. Well, must have been mine because I was getting a fuck ton of <laughs> Adriatico down the street. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was getting hey, Adriatico for Adriaticos. lunch every Man. fucking day. Everybody talks about Skyline Chili. <sighs> they don't know. That's about it. From Cincinnati, right? Scott Cold chili, star. but hey. Cold star. Uh, yeah, sorry. I don't even Everybody eat that Everybody talks about Cincinnati chili. Do some of that Adriatico's Bearcat pizza. You'll enjoy it. Oh, man. It doesn't get any fucking better than that. All right. I'll tell you what, man. I remember that uh, my bed smelled like tequila for well, an entire I don't know. Why year. Would, why would that happen? Why would your bed smell like tequila? <laughs> why would that happen? Well, because there was a random bottle of Jose Cuervo gold uh, sitting in the living room. Warm, I should say. And uh, it was my 21st. It was my 21st birthday. It was uh, it was it was like a Wednesday or Thursday night during the season, so we yep. n- knew we had, had practice, practice in the, the morning. Day, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Had practice the next day, so I was like, I don't want to go out tonight. I'm going to wait till the end of practice on Friday and then go celebrate my birthday on Friday. Yeah. And sure enough, turning 21, Jason wanted to make sure that alcohol was, you know, forced uh, upon me. It's a good brother. So him and – what was it? Three other linemen. It was, yeah, it was just about the entire house, which is offensive and defensive linemen and Zach Calaris, our quarterback. Shout out to everybody in that house. 127 West Nixon. Great house. It was a great house, but this was not a fond memory for me. They pinned me down. Arms. You didn't like this? Arms, legs. I'm sleeping, by the way, people. I'm trying sleeping. Well, you were trying to. You're not sleeping Stri- at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, clock strikes midnight, and here come the cavalry. Just come in. Just pin me down. Arms. One 300-pound man on each arm. One 300-pound man on each leg. 
and Jason comes in and says, "Open up." <laughs> and I'm like, Mm-mm, "I ain't doing it. You guys are fucking. Mm-mm, I'm not doing it." And then pinches the nose, so I have to, <laughs> I have to breathe out of my mouth. Classic Big Brother move, right there. This shit's a fucking movie, and pours the entire bottle of Jose Cuervo. It was not the whole bottle. Don't be dramatic. It was the entire fucking bottle to the point where I cough up the tequila after one gulp. It was not. It goes through my nose, into my eyes, and all over my fucking bed. So not only did he ruin my night of sleep, but for the rest of that fuck, like, really the rest of that season, my bed had, like, a little bit, of, like, just a teeny bit of just scent of tequila at all times. So every time I went to sleep, I was reminded that I was 21 now. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> you You're welcome. Sucker. Yeah. You, you went to University of Cincinnati, not BYU. What'd you expect? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah, I wish I would have went there. Go Cougs, man. Fuck. You only turned 21 one time. There'll yeah. be plenty of practice. Well, yeah, who, uh, who ruined your 21st birthday, Jason? I don't remember. I, I remember I did a shot. <laughs> I remember I did a four horsemen shot. My first four horsemen ever when I was 21, I think. Give the people some uh, understanding. What's a what's a four horseman shot? I believe it's Jim, Johnny, Jack, and it might be Jose. I don't know, but it's four, I thought it was. It's either all four uh, whiskeys. It's a fucking train wreck. It's terrible. It's the most disgusting shot in the world that I've ever had. I'm not gonna lie. No desire to ever do that. Yeah. Thank you for that, Jason. I've enjoyed tequila ever since. Oh, perfect. I'm glad that um, we started you off on your 21st birthday. Yeah, I was a vodka guy before that. Let's get to some no dumb questions. All right, now. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. That's right. Let's go sports bar. That's right. I figured out that you can chant no dumb questions. Ooh. Yeah. There's a lot of things you you can do in that. Just dumb people. Yeah. So it's a fun little jingle you can kind of put on anything, but let's get to them. All right. Obviously, we have some new fans, which has led to an increase in a new uh, type of uh, not dumb question. <laughs> Who has introduced this to a whole bunch of new dummies? Uh, which is a lot of intro level football questions. Uh, let's yeah. get to the first one. Let's get a good one here, man. What is this? New fan at Pearl Bramnick uh, 4300. Pearl. Pearl. Uh, dude, Pearl is a good name. Pearl That's is an a good old name. school. That's a southern ass fucking name, too. Right? That is like, Pearl. she's. Pearl. She's a, yeah, she's probably like 75. All right. <laughs> Pearl uh, Swifty here. Not going to lie. I learned more in like five minutes of no dumb questions than I have uh-huh. from watching my husband watch <laughs> football for years and having him half explain things to me as we go. Thanks, guys. This whole time, I thought we weren't making any sense at all. Yeah, that's not a question. That's just a statement. And uh, glad we could be of some help, Pearl. Yeah. There were a lot of comments of like, how can people ask these questions? Listen, I'm all about expanding football's audience. This is why we're here. Yeah. Come on There's in. No questions. Join Whatever the game. You think, ask away. Ask Have fun away. With it. We won't call you dumb if you ask a no dumb question. So that wasn't a question. I read this wrong, I guess. That was just a comment. I guess Pearls wasn't a question. I fucked that up. All right, whatever. First <laughs> no dumb question is from <laughs> Laura. Like a dumbass. Chicago N1 and N2. Heart. Blue heart. Okay. All right. Yeah. One, who is Gronk? Two, why does Travis do the archer pose when he enters the stadium? Three, can you please explain one versus two point conversions and why teams choose to do one over the other? I never know what is going on. All right. We got you, Laura. All right, one, Gronk. Who is Gronk? Gronk is uh, the uh, keeper of the turf. It's on every field has somebody who is in charge of maintenance of the turf, and that is known as the Gronk of that field. He's such bullshit. He just blatantly lied to you. He's fucking, he's playing the fiddle right now. Yeah. Rob Gronkowski is um, known as one of the greatest football players of all time. (laughs) One of, you're just going to say one of. I was wondering where you're going to go with it. I say greatest football players of all time. Oh, you did say that. (sighs) Yeah. I didn't say anything about tight end, which was the position that he played that he was extremely good at. Arguably the best to ever do it. What is Gronk? Who is Gronk? Gronk is, uh, he's like the most dominant force. Well, let's start with his name. R- Rob Gronk Gronkowski is short is most... for Rob Gronkowski. 
There you go. All right. I see you. You're getting good at this whole like break it down <laughs> thing, man. This guy's good, man. He's a tight end, played for the Patriots, Buccaneers. Am I missing anybody else? Yeah, won four Super Bowls. Uh, got a list of accolades that, um, yeah, we'll get him a first ballot Hall of Fame. One of the most unstoppable forces. I think Travis was on to something when he was getting to that. I mean, blocking, defending. You know, he was just one of the most unstoppable players of all time. And when you become that unstoppable, they just shorten your name because they get tired of saying Gronkowski, Gronkowski, Gronkowski. It's like, no, that's just Gronk. That's Gronk. That's Gronk, baby. And then other people try and steal it, you know, where, you know, Travis is now uh, what has been known as Baby Gronk. No, I'm fake Gronk. Baby Gronk's a that's whole right. different – that's a kid. Sorry. That's Travis a, yeah, has been known as fake person. Gronk. Now there is Baby Gronk, which that's a whole other issue. Fake Gronk head ass, as uh, Von Miller would say. As Von Miller said, our good friend Von Miller. <laughs> That's my dog. If you guys want to know more about Gronk, just go ahead and watch our episode that we had with Rob That's Gronkowski. Right. Yeah, and you'll get to know him. Don't know why we didn't think of that right away. Yeah, exactly. You'll know exactly who Gronk is. I guess I have to answer the second part to this question. I do the archer pose uh, when I enter the stadium because I always I wanted to do something when I when I ran out of the tunnel. And I'm like, man, you know what's really been motivating for me is to always you know dream big, always shoot for the stars. So I'm I'm just out there shooting up for the stars baby i um one of my favorite quotes from uh my guy Deion sanders prime time um he says if your uh, if your dreams aren't bigger than you then there's a problem with your dreams so uh don't forget to shoot for the stars ladies and gentlemen and number three uh can you Tom, please are you expl- making that up on the spot or is that really why you do the archer pose no that's really why i do the you archer put pose. that much thought into the I, I just thought you thought it was something cool and you just yeah you think i just wear number 87 just because well i know that you it's not because of the reason you've given people what do you think it is then? I think you just got given the jersey and you just wear 87 trips. And no, you found Jason, out that that's what leader. happens to offensive linemen, Jason. <laughs> As skill guys, we get to pick our jerseys. You get to pick it? All right. Yeah. So one versus two point conversions. This is the real, uh, I guess, not dumb question. Looking forward to answering. Why do teams choose one or the other? So typically a one point conversion, Laura, is a extra point try where you're kicking a field goal now from the, what is it, the 15 or something like that? I believe the 25. Is it the 25? I don't fucking know. That's a great question, man. I think it's 15 for some reason. Yeah, Either we way. suck at this, but yeah. Yeah, the one-point conversion is an easy chip shot field goal for the field goal kicker. Typically, a very, very high percentage chance of getting an extra point. Uh, we're talking above 95% likelihood that this thing's going through the uprights, and we're going to get seven points instead of six. Yeah. But a two-point conversion is essentially you get the ball after you score with one attempt to get the ball in the end zone. You get the you can either run it in or throw it in. If you don't get it, you get no points. If you get it, you get two extra points. Typically from the two yard line, unless there's a penalty, then you get it at the one yard line. Yeah. The penalty on the defense, that is. But yeah. Correct. That was pretty yeah. good. I mean, I I understood it. So um my head it was kinda it was going kinda kinda got off track a little bit there, but I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. That was pretty good, bud. Yeah, could have could have got more direct with it, probably. From oh my, love is a lie, Indy and two. That's a cool. long, that's a long handle. Yeah. yeah, couldn't just throw the old name on there. Can you explain why analysts say that a running back is running downhill? Oh, I mean, yeah. Have you ever seen anybody run downhill? Have you ever, you ever watched Isaiah Pacheco? <laughs> yeah. You ever seen anybody literally run down a hill? They look like they're like running faster. They're they're running with a purpose. There's also a physicality that kind of yeah. comes with running downhill that uh, that you would li- that you like to see. Like if yeah. you just watch Isaiah Pacheco run, he no. runs downhill. Uh, he runs like a locomotive. I mean, it's like a Pistons fire and type run to him. But it's fucking Tasmanian devil, man. Who is the most downhill? Running back of all time. So downhill running back is a guy who builds up momentum as he's running the ball. And it typically turns into like almost like an unstoppable force. The more momentum that it builds up right away. I think of my favorite running back growing up. Shout out to uh, the bus. Jerome Jerome Bettis. Bettis. Yeah. The bus. Another guy I think of would be Larry Zonka. I feel like yeah. when he was very similar, yeah. when he got yeah. moving, he just kind of yeah. was bouncing people off of him. I've only seen highlights, so yeah. I would say Jim Brown could be one at times, but I feel like he was too – he had too much of the shiftiness at the same time. He had thunder and lightning. You know what I mean? Jim Brown had it all. He had it all. So I, I, I think he was more under control. Like running downhill is like 
the running back is going to fall on his face if somebody doesn't try and tackle him. The one I think of right now is Derrick Henry. Oh. In our game today. I mean, the guy, he's a lot of outside, inside zone, outside zone. Got to get him before he gets. Yeah. You, yeah, you get yeah. you. He gets his legs moving, gets some momentum going downhill. Yep. Oh, baby, that's a it's a big man to try and break down. No doubt. All righty, good question. Good question. Great question. I actually enjoyed talking. That about good that. for right. Abrams. Oh, you got it. I'll take it. What is a sack? I need help. Well, a sack well, is when it's a lot of types of sacks. If we're talking about football sacks, yeah. When we're talking about football sacks, is when the quarterback gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. That's uh, that's it. But um, why is it called a sack? Sack loss. I don't know. You wrapped him up like a you wrapped him up in a sack. Yeah. What is the root of the term sack for football? Oh, here we go. Thanks, intern Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. The term sack was first popularized in the 1960s by Hall of Fame defensive end Deacon Jones. Deacon Jones, who felt that a quarterback being sacked devastated the offense in the same way that a city was devastated when it was sacked. He was referencing a time <laughs> where uh, villages were ransacked, I believe. Jones provided the L.A. Times reporter with some other detailed imagery about his forte. You take all the offensive linemen and put them in a burlap bag, and then you take a baseball bat and you beat on the bag. You're sacking them. You're, bra- you're bagging them, and that's what you're doing with the quarterback. I kind of like the first. That was kind of disturbing. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, that was a little bit like serial was a killer. Little fucking this guy, man. That I like was the back first in the gladiator days, man. When football was fucking football, man. Fuck. Well, this guy's the good deacon about is right. Um, beating the fuck out of people in a, a sacks sack. are Jesus. devastating to drives. They're devastating to offenses. A loss and a, a loss of downs is a huge play for the defense. Um, which is why they are so coveted and defensive linemen get paid so much. And boy, did we see a few sacks on Monday night. Oh, we're going to get to it. Oh, yeah. baby. Pretty crazy. That was a yeah. no-dumb question that we had to have answered. Thank you, intern Brandon. Yeah. And uh, for good for Abrams for asking kind of it. disturbing, but thank you. And shout out to Deacon Jones. All righty. Last dumb question from at Beth Ann Ham. What is the little fanny pack thing for on some players? Saw one on Patrick on Sunday and Jason on Monday. That, my friends, is called a hand hand warmer. warmer. Yeah, Yeah, it's just a hand warmer. warmer. Just keep your hand warm. Or if it's raining outside, it keeps your hand dry. I typically never use hand warmers to keep my hands warm. It's usually just to keep them dry. That's all I care about. I don't wear them because I've gotten, like, held by them and, like, kind of, like, it's just... Tackled by them. Not necessarily tackled by them, but they'll definitely slow you down. Yeah. They're supposed... They have Velcro on them, so they're supposed to just rip off... If somebody tries to tackle you by it, but it's still got a little tug to it. If you, if you know what I mean, if you're not like just absolutely you don't want to, hanging on by it, yeah, you don't so want to I wear just, it if sauce gardeners garden you. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to sauce. That boy was, we got, uh, I don't know if gotta I want to be more discreet. I love man. sauce. I love uh, sauce. got to be more discreet. And that was no dumb questions. We answered it fully, right? Yeah, it's a hand warmer. That's it, right? It usually keeps your hand warm or dry. And if you just wear one, you're wearing it because it's an accessory. Yeah, or yeah, or it's, it's just like a, cool. Yeah. Could you actually wear an actual fanny pack in a game? I mean, yeah, it depends on what you put in there, but why I don't think yeah, I don't think there's anything against it. Like if you wear I mean, what else could you put in there that would be Nothing. Are we starting a new trend? No. I might wear a fanny pack to the next game. What the fuck? <laughs> All right, that's it for No Dumb Questions, brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's go, sports bar. The delay on the audio, we can't get these claps down, but it's all right. It's all right. Intern Brandon's got us. Before we keep going, we need to shout out our sponsor, Prize Picks. Shout out. That's right. Prize Picks is a skill based, real money, daily fantasy sports game. Prize Picks is the most fun way. To win money this football season, you just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place an entry. It's that easy. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Mm, Number one. Number one. Always good to be number one. (laughs) And now for this portion of the ad read labeled personal experience to be read by (laughs) talent outside of me and Jason. All right. Because we... um. We are active NFL players and cannot participate, um, but you know that. And uh, you know who can help out? 
our intern Brandon. Hey. Brandon, how was uh, how was your Hi, second guys. week or third week with Prize Picks? I gotta update that ad read. My my fourth week with that with Prize Picks was great. <laughs> nice. Hey. Yeah, I did great, guys. I'm crushing it. I'm still here. Uh, a few more weeks and I'm done. A few more weeks I'm phoning <laughs> this thing in. I'm out of here. <laughs> Uh, you want to get out of here while I give him some picks? All right. We'll All kick right. rocks. See you, dude. All right. Let's talk picks real quick. Um, went okay last week, but price picks has a lot of options. So we're not down bad too, uh, too bad right now. Uh, what we're looking at this week. I really like Travis up against Minnesota. I really like Tyreek uh, against the giants. And to be honest, I kind of want to throw in Jeff- Justin Jefferson for a touchdown as well. Uh, but that's just me. I don't know what I'm talking about. you got lots of options. you got pass touchdowns, rushing touchdowns. You can even take field goals if you're some kind of degenerate. So Price Picks has everything you're looking for. Let me bring the guys back. Oh, man. All right. Well, hopefully our intern, Brandon, did you guys right this week. And if you want to get into Daily Fantasy this season, go to prizepicks.com slash new heights. Use the code new heights for a first deposit match up to $100. Not a bad, not a bad little deal there. That's prizepicks.com slash new heights, code new heights for daily fantasy sports made easy. We need to shout out one of our sponsors that you probably see us drinking during the show. Shout out. That's Accelerator Active Energy. If you've been looking for something with zero sugar that gives you sustained energy, gets that metabolism going, Mm -hmm. and gives you the enhanced focus. You need to read and record a podcast and just do a whole bunch of important shit. Go check out Accelerator Active Energy Drink. How about I got, that? Uh, I got that Kiwi Lime on fucking standby. I got, I got, that got Georgia. like 100 more in the fridge behind me. This shit is crack. Liquid crack. Literally. Georgia Peach Paradise. Ooh, All right. Accelerator Active Energy is available nationwide at Target, Hy-Vee, and Quick Trip. Go get you some of this sugar-free liquid crack. Mm, get you some plant-based thermogenics. Bold topics to wrap up week four in the NFL. Uh, we usually start off with our games. Jason, I'll tee up yours first, man. Eagles 34, Commanders 31. A little overtime thriller. The division games, man, those are fucking – those games are fucking real deal every fucking time. Well, doesn't who doesn't matter. love a little free football? Yeah. That was uh, that was wild, man. Initial thoughts, man. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like you said, in-division games are tough. There's a lot of knowledge and familiarity with the team you're playing. We played against a lot of those guys, especially the guys I was going against, Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. We've had a lot of matchups against each other. You're, you're playing against a team that fully knows what you do well, what you don't do well, how they can attack you, and it's always going to be interesting. And it always it also means more. You know, the division games are going to have more uh, implications come playoff time. So, you know, everything kind of starts with trying to win your division in this league. Commanders got the better of us last time we played him. We had four turnovers, I think, in that game. Not a highlight for us last year. But, um, you know, got to uh, get him this week at home and uh, took us in overtime, but we got it done. Yeah. No, man, I – um. And shout out to the commanders, man. That's a that's a hungry football team right there, man. Those guys fight. Um, and I personally have an absolute blast watching their offense, knowing that uh, Eric Bieniemy, EB, one of my favorite coaches of all time, is uh, is he's at the he's at the helm of uh, everything they do offensively over there, and it's um it's fun. I kind of like play the guessing game uh, on what they're going to do and what plays they're going to run because they run a lot of the plays that we ran last year or have ran still to this day, but it's, uh, it's fun, man. It's fun watching that team go. And, uh, my guy, Logan Thomas had a, had a few big catches, uh, big tough, some tough catches down in the red zone, getting back from, uh, from being out for a few weeks. So shout out to Logan for, uh, for coming down, representing the tight end room the right way. But I'll tell you what, man, that, uh, that commander's team fights, man. And that's one thing that I've always, I've always thought EB, the enemy brings to the table is just a whole lot of toughness, man. Yeah. And, uh, it just trickles down. You, you can't go through practice and through a training camp and, um, be underneath his coaching without having just a little bit more grit to you, man. It's just how he, uh, how he goes about his business. Yeah. You guys, uh, you guys were down seven and a half. Um, we was there anything, was there anything like that you guys did at halftime to really flip the switch? No, I mean, I think we, we, we got in a better rhythm in the second half. I mean, we only had four possessions in the first half. Damn. They did a good job. The opening drive, I think was like an eight minute. It felt like drive to start the game off, uh, for the commanders. So, you know, we, we had, th- three legitimate drives and one two-minute drive, and we scored 10 points. 
But yeah, they they controlled the clock and the ball for a lot of the first half, and uh, we finally started catching our groove there in the second half. You guys put up uh, what is it, fourteen unanswered, and then uh, going into the fourth quarters, Commanders start to kind of make their comeback. Brian Robinson, a huge fifteen yard touchdown to tie it up, twenty four twenty four, and back with the ball with three twenty left in the game. That, that's when it kind of got interesting. There's there's a lot of controversy on. Uh, on whether or not you guys go for the touchdown or just try and run the clock out there, but uh, you guys ended up, you guys ended up going for the TD, and it wasn't, it was a design touchdown call too. You know what I mean? It was, yeah, it was definitely a shot play, one hundred percent. It was right at that point in the game where it, it's kind of like, so we're second and four with a minute and forty three left in the game. Apparently, yeah. Commanders had one timeout, so I think it's right on that cusp of like, do we alter what we're doing? Because basically, if you run it twice and you don't get the first down, you're looking at kicking a field goal, and you're probably giving the commanders the ball with right around a minute left in the game, yeah. which, in my opinion, is a lot of time to try and get a field goal to tie the game again or potentially win it with a touchdown. Um, so I think that's one of those things where it's probably I don't know what the analytics would say to be honest with you I feel a lot more comfortable scoring seven points if I could score seven points late in the game like that and go up a, a touchdown I think I'm taking that over yeah. any of it I th- there's definitely a yeah go ahead no I'm with you I think I think at the end of the day I think a, a, a mistake that a lot of teams make in two minute situations is that they become passive too quickly whether it's defense or offense you go into the situational uh calls that kind of handcuff and make you predictable and hey you know this game's tied let's just until we know for sure that we can run the clock down and kick a field goal to win it or give them minimal minimal time left let's just operate our offense and let's try and score points because that's the biggest thing that we need to do on this drive obviously Jalen and AJ uh, connected for a a uh, long score. I think we were on like the 25 yard line, somewhere around there, 28, something like that. AJ made an unbelievable play, super fired up, kind of got tangled up after the play. Might have, you know, got a personal, he did get a personal foul. And that certainly made Washington's job a lot easier on the ensuing drive, but hard to get after a guy after he scores a long touchdown and gives you the lead. Got to keep our composure, but I feel them though. They were, those two were jawing back and forth all game. So, dude, it was all game and you, you could tell. You just got to keep your composure, knowing the knowing the situation at hand. You just embarrassed him by the by the play you just made. Yep. You don't got to rub it in. I'm he with feels you. it. Trust me, he feels it. <laughs> he knows. He knows. Um, but yeah, you know, as soon as we scored, I think everybody's like, okay, they got a lot of time. Our defense is going to have to come out here and and get it done. And that's a good lead to give a good defense, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're up you a got touchdown some dogs up front. They got to throw it. We know our defensive line is is stacked, and uh, oh yeah, you know, whenever you have a great D line, it's it's daunting for an offensive line going into a two minute but the commanders sam howell i mean dude he played great he really did coming off of a game where i think he threw like four interceptions maybe last game you know he did not do that this game he played lights out uh coming back they score again now back to the one point two point conversion Uh, now dumb question this is the other thing that's being brought up from the game which is you know should riverboat ron have gone with a (laughs) two-point conversion attempt Uh, I don't know. I, I, this is always one of those where it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. What I'll would tell you, you what, man. You're I'm the head going coach. for it. I'm going You're for going it. Fucking, two point? I play, yeah, my play calls are all like I'm playing Madden anyways. So I'm going, <laughs> for, I go for it on fourth down. If it's yeah. like fourth and 10 in my own fucking 20 yard line, I'm, I'm probably going for it. I say this. We, we scored, we, uh, Doug Peterson's first year here. We're playing the Baltimore Ravens. We go down, score a touchdown right at the end of the game. Same exact situation. Go for it. All of a sudden, two point wins it, one point ties it. We go for two and we lost the game. So I'm kind of in favor of going to overtime after that. <laughs> I think a lot of it depends on the situation of the game. How good has their red dome defense been? How confident do you feel about your two point plays? You got a good play. If you got a good play, have you already run that good play? Because mm. usually in a game, you go in. With you got that one, good one in your maybe pocket, two and... two point plays, right? Like you're like, yeah. you don't go in with a bunch on the call sheet. So, right. um, 
you know, maybe they weren't, maybe, maybe EB wasn't confident with the two point play or yeah. um, who knows. And shout Either out to way. Dougie P. He's got, Dougie P's got like one of the most legendary, like two point conversion, like stats and fourth down conversion stats of all time. I mean, how many times he goes for it and how many times he gets it. So that was just the one, that was just the one time that it didn't play out for him. Should be Riverboat Doug. All right now. Ooh, what's a good one? What's a good one for Doug? Uh, double down Doug. Right. Double uh, down Doug. <laughs> du- <laughs> I like that. That's good. Either way, obviously the commanders like to go for one point and uh, we get a little bit of free football. Free football. A little overtime football. Commanders got it, man. They won the toss. That's a huge part of playing fucking overtime football is winning that toss. But they go three and out. Every time I've seen the coin that has been flipped, the coin that Two-sided. they used. Two sided. And the reason, no, the reason I know oh. it, the reason I remember this coin is because on one side of the coin, it's a jersey with a number 62. And every time that coin has been flipped, tails. It's landed 62. And that's I think wild. that's tails. I forget whether that's tails or head. But every time that coin has been flipped, 62 has been face up. So th- immediately when they called it, I was like, fuck. And they got it. <laughs> <laughs> Say that coin. That coin just always goes tail up. So the commanders, <laughs> uh, they go three and out. And yeah. during the next drive, fourth and one, what does Sirianni call? The most unstoppable play in the game. Organized mass. 92%, baby. <laughs> Comes in clutch once again. You guys convert the first and then go down through the fucking uprights. Earlier in the game, uh, you guys actually get called for offsides on a sneak. Yeah. Dickerson was just, he was he was level with you. I don't think he was ahead of you. I just think he was level with you. And they were like, yeah, nah. Well, I think they actually might have screwed this up. I'll, I'll be interested to see what Ferrari says. So we got warned about this in the week. You know, defensive players have been lined up in the neutral zone to try and stop the play. And that we've seen that called on opposing defensive lines. But they did send a warning that Landon has been in the neutral zone and that that is against like the only player allowed in the neutral zone is a center. So you, I guess for all the Swifties and even like regular football fans, I don't know how familiar people are with the neutral zone, but the ball is a neutral zone. No offensive player or defensive player can break the plane of either side of the ball. All the offensive players have to be behind the ball other than the center who is obviously holding the ball. And all of the defensive players have to be on the other side of the ball. Landon has been lining up in the neutral zone. So they warned us before the game. He's still he's still a hair behind you. We can see it from that picture right there. The reason they called this, though, they said that his hand was in the neutral zone. And you see that hand in in the neutral zone. Yeah, I also see a defensive player. <laughs> yeah, well, dude, so they were actually, Deron Payne was putting his hand under the ball, which that's a whole nother thing. But regardless, I don't, whatever. It's, everybody's going to be jockeying for position. I don't give a crap. Let's just run the play. Listen, man, you already know that that play is pretty unstoppable. You got to do something. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. But the problem is that's not Landon's hand. That's my hand. What I'm getting at, I get in a four-point stance on goal line sneak. That's my left hand, and they called it on Landon, but Landon's hand is behind the ball. So I think they messed this up, actually. But that's what happens when you go searching for things. That's crazy. That do- just looking at it from that view, though, it does look like that's your that's not your hand. Yeah, that looks like it's his hand. Yeah, and that's a problem when you go looking to make a call, in my opinion. But whatever, they did a good job on that play. I don't know if we would have got it even without the offsides. Teams. I'll say this right now, and you're seeing it across the league. Defenses are doing a much better job at defending this play than they've done (laughs) since I've been in the league. There is an emphasis being made. We have always got quarterback sneaks, if I'm being honest, very easily against the commanders. The commanders came out with a much better attempt at stopping this play than they've ever had. They must have fucking hit up your – who was buddy that came in, the Scottish man? Uh, they must oh have gosh. hit him up. They're like, "Hey, how do you stop this organized mess?" Yeah, you got to unorganize it. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> genius! Uh, damn it! <laughs> it's no longer the tush push. It is officially the brotherly shove. It's a better name. It I don't is, know who man. came up with this, but shout out it's to you. Long overdue. That's a much better name for it, and it and it speaks to the team and the city that has really gotten this thing going in the NFL. So I love it. Well, just to uh, give you guys some good numbers here, the Tush Push conversions of uh, 2023, the Eagles are 10 of 11 at 91%, (laughs) keeping that thing right (laughs) around 
the like the, we've always the said, the projected that 92%. number, right? Hey, that's within the standard deviation. Rest of the league, though, not so hot. Forty nine of seventy one, getting us at a whopping sixty eight percent. Man, I'm telling you, teams are doing a better job this year. Yeah, I mean, All defensive right. teams. They have clearly it's been on their radar. They've been talking to Scottish rugby guys. They've been figuring it out. I hope that we can stop it in November. <laughs> Back to the uh, game-winning drive after getting the first uh, on the sneak. You guys um, drive down the field and ultimately set up Jake the Make Elliott for a 54-yard field goal, which he nailed. He nailed. The Eagles win 34-31. Devontae Smith told the reporter after the game that he calls Jake Elliott Chicken Little. <laughs> <laughs> when I asked why, Devontae said, you seen Chicken Little? That's what he looked like. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. Why do you call him that? Have you seen the movie? That's fucked up. Does Jake even wear glasses? He does not. Does not wear glasses. <laughs> he has a beard. Pretty much the only thing that he has in common with Chicken Little is that he is the skinniest and shortest guy on the roster, but <laughs> got a big leg. But yeah. You think uh, you think Devontae has gotten a Chicken Little comment before? You think somebody was like, you look like Chicken Little. That's probably and what's in his head. And he probably just was like, nah, I don't really look. I'm going to pass this off. Chicken Little. Yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. All I know is that Jake um, Jake made the classic blunder of, I'm going to need to put an end to this shit, nicknamed Vetoed, which anybody who's ever been to elementary school or middle school knows once, that only further you cements the nickname. <laughs> you can't fight back on the you nickname. Can't fight it's it, just going to be more of the nickname. You gotta have you gotta have fun with it, man. Fuck, man. Nah, we can't be calling Jake Chicken Little out here. I man. like Jake the Make. I don't know if that if, if Brandon came up with that, putting it in as the long rundown, as he keeps never, making, as long I've as he keeps making it, them. But I like that Jake the Make. That's good. Final thoughts on the game. I gave him the Wayne's World at the end of the game. If we can get that clip on here, Brandon, I gave him the We Are Not Worthy. We are not, we are worthy. not worthy. We are not we are worthy. Not worthy. <laughs> and I was trying to. I don't know why I was thinking of it, but then I remembered your pregame fit. Uh, in your Instagram post. I had the Wayne's World Wayne's hat, World. baby. I was going back to New York, man. I had to show <laughs> SNL a little love, man. That's some good shit. Showing! <laughs> All righty, before we keep going, we got to let you know about something new and unexpected from our friends at Experian. It's the all-new Experian Smart Money Debit Card and digital checking account that helps you build credit without the debt. How is that possible? All right. So basically, <laughs> all it does is use the monthly payments you're already making, like utilities, whatever streaming of services you're using, or even rent, to raise your credit scores. I mean, that makes sense. I don't know yeah. why that wouldn't raise your credit score. Yeah. I don't understand why banks haven't done this sooner. And because it's a debit card, it won't get you into debt. That's right. How nice is that? It's a debit card and checking account, not a credit card. I'm not going to lie. I really wish I had this back uh, when I was in college. Yeah, my credit wouldn't be that bad. The craziest thing was when I was getting paid by the NFL, my credit score was nothing because I had never had a credit card. Yeah. And it was beyond infuriating that I couldn't get loans yeah. out, even though I would always pay. I would always pay. Uh, Kelsey always pays his debts. Travis Kelsey never pays his utilities. So I came out with an atrocious <laughs> credit <laughs> score. Knowing that I still had to pay Cincinnati Bell for the energy and a whole bunch of cable companies. Experian is the credit expert. So get the Experian smart money debit card and digital checking account at Experian.com slash Kelsey. Again, get your Experian smart money debit card and digital checking account. Go to Experian.com slash Kelsey or download the app for free. Experian is not a bank. Experian boost results will vary. See terms at Experian.com slash legal. We're not lawyers, folks. Our next partner is AG1, the daily foundational nutrition supplement that helps give me the energy and nutrition to power through workouts and get through the grind of an NFL season. You might not believe it, but I take AG1 every day. Jason, why don't you tell the people why you take it, though? As an NFL player... As a father of three, as a documentary filmmaker, as a cow farmer, I have a lot going on. And AG1 gives me the peace of mind that I'm getting comprehensive nutrients to support my whole body health. And AG1 is NSF certified hey. for sports, meaning it's safe to take for professional athletes, Olympians, and just high-performance athletes. That's right. Every batch of AG1 is third-party tested for over 790 contaminants. Damn. So you can feel confident knowing what's on the label is actually in every scoop. 
So if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and <gasps> five free AG1 travel packs with your oh first purchase. I love D travel packs. Go to drinkag1.com slash new heights. That's drinkag1.com slash new heights. Check it out. Check it out. All righty. Let's get to yours, Trav. Yep. Chiefs 23, Jets 20. We all watch this one. I mean, everybody <laughs> watch this one. <laughs> yeah, everybody Sunday night there. football. Initial thoughts. What do you got? That, that's a good defense, man. That's yeah. a damn good defense. And, and a very good team, too, man. When uh, when Zach Wilson is out there flying around, uh, having fun, making plays, man, that uh, that stadium gets rocking. That's a, that's a home field advantage, 100%. You could feel like you were in a hostile environment when they tied that thing up. Yeah. Other than that, though, I just think uh, offenses, we, we just got to get rolling, man. We got to get rolling consistently week to week, uh, put things together back to back. You know, I think we had a great game against the Bears, but started off solid in the first quarter. Uh, got to end the first half a lot better um, and then start the second half a lot better. It was uh, it wasn't it wasn't the most beautiful game for us. But I'll tell you what, man, when you get put in a tough situation uh, with like a four minute situation at the end of the game and you find a way to to run the clock out, keep the ball in your in your hands, uh, not put the offense back out there, their other teams offense back out there, man, that's uh, it was a fun way to end of it and end the game that is. Well, right away, it seemed like uh, the cameras were more interested in potentially the patrons of the game than the people playing it. There are a lot of stars in attendance. New York, New York. I should say New Jersey, the Meadowlands, baby. Most notably of the stars was Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Back in MetLife Stadium, post Achilles surgery, I'm assuming. There was a video of you and Aaron talking during warmups on the sideline. What were you guys talking about? Um, Am I allowed to ask that? 100%. That was, I just went, I just, yeah, I talked about a little bit of the stash work, how powerful this thing can ah. be, man. And then on top of that, just, uh, I just wanted to go up to him. I didn't shoot him a text or anything like that. I just wanted to go up to him and tell him how excited everybody was and, how bummed out we were that, you know, you got banged up and ha- needed to get surgery. Um, watching Hard Knocks, man, it was just, it was electric to see what Aaron Rodgers was going to do with that team. And not to say that they're, you know, not going to be great because he's not there, but I think that uh, having Aaron there was going to be, you know, that much more entertaining for for somebody that's a fan of the game like I am. Um, but it's, I mean, and you just hate to see the, the great ones uh, go down with injury. That's for sure. So I just want, I just went up to him and told him we were all hurting for him and uh, hopefully he gets healthy quick. Well, it's wild that he was at the game and walking around this soon. I feel like after surgery. Yeah. I think he's, I think he's fully on board with getting back. If they can find, if they can find a way to make the playoffs, I'm pretty sure he's fully on board with getting back by then. Who was the fastest we've seen? I it didn't talk to him about that. Don't fucking hit me media with, that Travis, you're announcing I, right now Aaron I is coming not. back this season. I think, you're announcing that on New Heights. I think I know guy. nothing. No, who was the fastest we've ever seen come back from an Achilles? I think it was Terrell Suggs, right? Didn't Terrell Suggs tear his Achilles early one season and then play later that season? Uh, I can't think of it. I know Cam Akers came back pretty fucking fast. Yeah. I think a lot of it depends on how it tears, right? Like whether it's like a clean tear or it like sh- kind of like shreds, whatever. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. There's probably a lot that goes into it. How fast your body heals. Like some people's body just takes a little bit longer, you know? Yeah. You know, and he's young, so he'll be all right. It's the power of the stash, baby. You keep that stash, baby. You'll be back out on the field in November. The other uh, guest that was in attendance, obviously, was Paul Rip. Hey. Saw your man. My brother. I mean, if we're being very uh technically he was our first guest which happened yeah man gave last, me the birthday uh, shout year out ago. last year it gave was me one the year birthday ago, shout it was out. this your birthday's this week shout out hey make sure if you see travis kelsey this week everybody wish him a happy birthday it, it'll be this episode what airs the fourth so your birthday will be thursday is that adding up yeah that adds up all oh, right boy. um yeah what'd you and paul talk about i just had i hadn't seen him in a while so i just said what's up uh said he just got done uh filming some stuff um and he's uh, he's back in the city or he's back in the states, so yeah, it was fun to see him there, man. He's a lifelong Chiefs fan. Um, so I've seen him at every Super Bowl, every parade, every big Chiefs moment. Um, him and his son Jack, and we just uh, we've kind of had some fun throughout the uh, throughout the madness and uh, throughout all the wins, man. It's been it's been a blast getting to, getting to know him, knowing how much of a fan 
I am of uh, his entire career, man. So it was cool to see him. He came out of nowhere. I was like, what, man? He just fired me up for tonight, man. I didn't know my guy, Paul Rudd, was in the fucking building. Let's go. The stars are out, man. He got to watch a good game. It ended he up did. being an awesome game on Sunday night. Let's start with the first half. Ups and downs. You guys got off to a really hot start. Went up 17 nothing in the first quarter. I'm not going to lie. I was not expecting a good game after the first quarter. I thought it was going to be out of hand quickly. Yeah, we got to smell blood in the water, man. We got to smell blood in the water and just fucking keep the foot on the pedal, man. Isaiah Pacheco got things going early with a 48-yard rushing touchdown, which I don't even feel right on like announcing that touchdown without bringing up my man Trey Smith's block on that touchdown. My dog. Hey, dog. listen. Trey I Smith. mean, Dude. the that dancing bear vicious. out in space, you never know how it's going to go. vicious. It's either a, a KO or it's a, a lot of he, elephants on parade. He knew he knew he was going to he, he was going to land on his stomach after that Dog. one. He went full Superman. Full extension throw. left his feet. That is such <laughs> that's a, a three. That is like a, a Hail Mary of an Dude. attempt to get a block. And, and he, he nailed fucking it. La- yeah, he, he fucking landed it, man. Dang, that shit was I love awesome. watching Trey play. I'm not gonna lie. It's the best. I, I, we need to get him on the podcast. From I gotta the first talk fucking to that play, guy. man. From the first fucking play to the end, dude. I love that dude. Yeah, we definitely got to get him on the pod. You heard that, Trey? I'm coming um, for you. Pacheco had 84 yards rushing, 42 yards receiving in the first half alone, and back in his home state in New Jersey. Hey, he's worn red everywhere he's been. High school, college at Rutgers. Uh, and he finds himself wearing red back in his home state, put up an outstanding game. We'll get more to that uh, in just a little bit. Pat Mahomes then threw his 200th career touchdown pass. 200, God damn. Uh, to Noah Gray. We saw that one. Mahomes is the fastest quarterback to reach 200 touchdowns in NFL history. Yeah. Cheers to 200 more, bud. <laughs> Let's keep let's keep stacking those things up, huh? How about it? Let's fucking do it. Yeah, man. I mean, Patty Mahomes. My guy Noah Gray, man. I thought that touchdown was if you watch it from uh for, from actually like diagnosing the play, um, Pat did an unbelievable job of, you know, not just pulling the trigger initially because I was open. Um, kind of like saw the defender on Noah leaving Noah to come to and tackle to me because sure. Pat's eyes came to me. Yeah. So in time, that's why Pat Mahomes is one of the best, man. That play, uh, it's little things like that, be able to see things that I think would most quarterbacks just aren't fucking Gonna notice. able to see. They're just not comfortable enough to keep their eyes on a certain player. But yeah, Pat Mahomes, 200th. You had like three catches early or something like that, and then it seemed like – a lot of the attention on the defense was starting to get applied to you. Three catches, then one drop, and it was just, it was, yeah, it was struggling. We struggled as offense from that point on. It seemed like things were going to get out of hand after the first quarter. Not going to lie, we already talked about that. They also get a field goal. Um, so you guys are leading at the half 20 to 12. Uh, but it definitely felt like the momentum had started to shift a little bit before halftime. Yeah. What I was mean, the message we- at halftime? What were you guys talking about? Finish this game, man. Finish this game. Don't let that what happened there at the end of that first half trickle into the second half, which unfortunately it kind of did. And um, you know that's why it's football, baby. You got to rally the troops sometimes and just you know find ways to win tough games. And even though we made that game hard on ourselves, I think we still you know at the end of the day finished the game the right way. And uh, and that's what you got to be proud of. That's what you got to take away from it. And sometimes you just get fortunate that you know you can take these learning. Uh, these bumps in the road that uh, that everybody's got to learn and kind of mesh together a little bit more, uh, you take them with a win. And uh, and that's what, at the end of the day, all that fucking matters. Yeah, second half starts. Pat says it himself in the postgame interview. What you just said, you got to find a way to win in the second half. Jets tie the game 20-20 early in the third quarter. Chiefs D shuts them out the rest of the game. That's, that's a good ass defense, man. <laughs> we gotta we gotta start fucking helping these guys out because they're playing. Yeah. I mean, not that we're not helping them out, but we gotta start like really putting up points that we know we're capable of. Because if they're holding teams under three scores or under three touchdowns, I don't I don't see why we can't put up four to five touchdowns a game, man. Uh, we have the firepower to be able to do it. We just got to go out there and stop hurting ourselves, man. Harrison Bucker scores what would be the game winning field goal, twenty six yard field goal. That's my dog. 10 minutes and 51 seconds left in the fourth Harry. to put you guys up 23-20. Let's talk about uh, the controversy a little bit. After uh, the Jets get the ball back, 
Zach Wilson ends up fumbling. Chiefs D creates a turnover with seven minutes and 24 seconds left in the fourth quarter. You guys then begin to become a classic Andy Reid long drive drill going 15 plays, 45 yards, and killing it all of the time. Killing all of the time left on the clock. Um, you even took a direct snap at one point in this drive on third and one, which I always love when the big Yeti's at quarterback. Not right now. Man, that thing almost got away from me, boy. I'll tell you what. It was a – you that could tell it was a little bit off, of and it was hot. It and was hot. It, and I had, took, I had took a few shots in my left shoulder. I really couldn't, like, raise it that well. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the drive was highlighted uh, by a final uh, scramble from Pat Mahomes, a 25-yard scramble where he went down on the, fir- the one-yard line uh, to be able to kneel it out and not give the Jets an opportunity – to uh, tie the game or win it. But that really might not have been the the highlight of it. I think there was a controversial call. Jets fans have been complaining. Uh, friend of the show, Sauce Gardner, has been uh, saying words. I feel like everybody's been commenting on this. We've heard from a lot of Jets fans, but I think it's time to bring on our own Jets fan. The biggest Jets fan we know and uh, the person that keeps this show uh, successful on all of our social medias. It didn't feel right to give Jets fans... Um, to not give Jets fans an opportunity to speak up. So we decided to bring our own Jets Jake. Please welcome Jets Jake onto the show, everybody. Yeah, Jake. Jets Jake. Let's go, Jake. He's doing how's it? great. How's it, how do you, how you feeling, Jake? Yeah, how's your I mean, Tuesday? It's pretty shitty. That was a rough way to watch an end of a football game. Oh, come on. You guys had a fucking – it was one of your best games yet. I'm sitting here taking notes about – you guys finishing off the game the right way and blah blah blah. Yeah, ball in the ball in ball in the hand. <laughs> ball in hand. You Oh, ball in the hand. You 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 want to talk about the flag in the hand while the pick was called? Oh, no, no, no. All right. Ball right. ball in hand. You want to talk about the fumble that happened right before the drive? Oh. Um, ah, you got to No, just... I don't want to talk about that. All right. All right. Shout out to Zach Wilson. <laughs> um yeah. no, nah, man, it was, you know, I the one thing you never do wanted. you think it was a hold? Was well, it a let's hold? get to the pl- let's set it up every, for everybody every, watching. Every that holding might not call, have been I feel like, is controversial. Let's set it up. Chiefs throw an interception uh, on a play in this drive along the right sideline. It seems like it is a interception for the Jets, and they're going to get an opportunity to come down the field and either tie it or win it in the fourth quarter. But lo and behold, flag on the ground. Um, and I think what Jake is referencing is that the flag came out. What some are saying, and by some, a lot of Jets fans are saying, a little late. Do you was, agree that the flag I've seen was late, late calls Travis? my entire life. I've seen late calls my entire life. Okay. What do you mean? That's I've been fair. a part of calls right. where the play feels like it's over and I still get called for it. If you're arguing whether he threw it late and whether he waited till the intercept, that's one argument. If you're arguing whether or not it was a hold, that's where I'm. I, I you clearly see the man's arm across the Marquez's face holding onto the opposite shoulder. Okay. He leaned into him with all his weight. It was a bang bang situation, but if you're a ref, look behind well, bang, sauce. Well, bang and you bang s- is supposed to not be a penalty, right? Bang bang is like they use that to say not a penalty usually. I've never bang, heard bang, that. Play. That's what I've they say. It's, that. a, it's a bang bang play. It's no, I, I was saying bang bang because it just happened quick. Yeah. If you right. see if you see strain and somebody getting restricted with the guy's arm across his chest holding the back of his shoulder pads Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's bang bang or not if you give the ref that you can't give the ref that you know what i mean like you can't put it in his hands to be able to call that you know what i mean i'm so glad you you brought this up because on third and 22 jermaine johnson is waving at the ref being held by the you can't just go like this and get a holding call i thought that was nonsense let's not go we we don't need offensive alignment getting put on the map here Stick. Let's stick to the points of hand. Let's stick to the point of hand. Reverse it, Travis. Chiefs are on where the Jets are at. Is that a hole? How many times is that happening to you on every play? Um, just question. Just a question. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I feel like the Jets weren't playing that much, man. Um, but if you get a good defensive, like they're calling man a lot, situations like that are going to happen all throughout the game. And I'm not right. sure if it was a quote-unquote makeup call from what had been happening the entire day. Mm. This is why we just need to interview refs. I would love to hear Dude. the refs 
talk about this. It's not a bad idea. I did you know see I mean? Dean Blandino. I just want to hear it. Like you, it, whether it's right or wrong, it already yeah. happened. I just so want I did, to hear yeah. his thought process so that I know I can stay out of that situation the next time. I did see Dean Blandino. Who the fuck is that guy? A very well regarded um, former official and uh, uh, knowledgeable on officiating NFL uh, analyst. What did he say? He said that it was clearly a hole. I'm not going to lie. What does he know? <laughs> My biggest problem with it is that even though it's certainly within the realm of being called a hold, I do not like when officials call questionable things at the end of games. That's all I'm going to say. I'm with you on that. I think let the guys play through. It's got to be a – It's got. in my opinion, it, it should be a – Clear, blatant foul, which this was right on that board. Clear, border. blatant foul. <laughs> <laughs> right within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Dude's holding the flag. It was past five. It was a little bit. <laughs> you could saw. You could saw. He was like fucking reaching for it. He tied his belt a little too tight. It was, was in like, his hand. He had it, it out. Zach Wilson was more decisive with his throws on Sunday uh, night. He was than playing good. So he let's was get good. to that. As a Jets yeah. fan. What are you feeling after? I know you're not happy with the way the hold went. What are we feeling about Zach Wilson? Uh, is the optimism back for Jets fans? Yeah. I mean, I've just been on a roller coaster ride this entire season, but if he plays like that, like Robert Sala said, we're going to win a lot of games. So very excited to see him play like that at the end of the season. I think to your point, and Jason, I'll, I'll speak to you and some Eagles fans here. I think we're just sick and tired of some late game calls going for the Chiefs when teams could have, you know, had the ball back and a chance to decide the game with the offense on the field. We just got to give the fans what they want to see, you know, some offensive football. Sounds like you guys aren't playing the game right, man. Well, That's all I'm going to say. That's a good pun right there. The game, the, the, all the ins and outs, baby. You got to play it right. Tell them to throw the all flag right. faster next time. All right, listen, I'm okay, okay, Jake, you've had your time. All right, you're, thank you for joining us, Jake. Everybody shout Everyone, out to Jets, Jets Jake, Jake, baby. Hey, Jets, Jake. Hey. <laughs> we appreciate you guys and sauce thank you i think jets jake had a at a, a number of points that uh, i think eagles i mean it, i'm not gonna lie there was late holding call keeps the drive alive for the chiefs and then they take a kneel at the one and just run the clock out listen it's the same thing as when um you know james Bear got called for the hold it's if you're gonna do it and you do it there's always a chance that he gets called i will say in general, and I remember talking to Gene Sterator after we played in the Super Bowl against the Pats, you know, his whole emphasis was not to make an impact in the game if he didn't have to. And I think that's what officials should be trying to do. Dean Blandino thinks otherwise. He thinks you just call the game the way you normally call it. Yeah. What, I, I'm not a favor of that. Let, let, let the boys play, ref. Let the boys play. Yeah. Until you got a guy literally on your back and you're trying well, that's to that's when you call it though that's it's got to be egregious it's got to be egregious i'm with you I, you just have to in my mind you just have to not put it in their hands i think that's a good way to say it you know what i mean just don't even don't even put it in the ref's hands to make that fucking call and um you got to play you got to play that borderline of being physical and playing smart in, in a situation like that because those calls are detrimental man if you if you do get hit with them I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I've been you on can't both put sides, yourself, baby. I've dude, been on both sides. <laughs> you can't put yourself in the situation. And listen, a lot of people do complain about the Chiefs getting late calls that go their way and then winning the game. Uh, that's what good teams do. They capitalize on mistakes that other teams make. All right. So, you know, I think that this is a little bit of a fallacy that the Chiefs get all these calls. You only remember it because they end up closing it out after these calls are made. There were other calls out the game that didn't go the Chiefs way. There are the calls that, uh, there are things that didn't happen. It's just that, unfortunately, the Jets didn't capitalize quite as much. That's football, baby. Man, Robert Sell is pissed. I don't know if yeah, you saw the no. game. I'll tell you what, man. I, I'm not happy. Not I, I, happy. I, I went up to him after the game and I told him, Coach, you know, that was a hell of a, that was a hell of a fight. Like, you do it the right way. You can tell that you, you're in it for the right reasons. You do it the right way. And I respect the hell out of that. He wasn't trying to hear shit I was saying after the game. You're still pretty fired up from how it ended. <laughs> but um, I still serious? wanted to make sure. Yeah, I still wanted to make sure you heard me say that. I got a lot of respect for that coach. And I will say this back to the officiating. Dude, I am so tired of fans, of everybody getting upset at officials. I We've talked about it last year. We had a game against the Commanders end on everybody complaining it should have been a face mask. There are going to be missed calls. There are going to be calls that go for you. This is the way the game goes. And – the thing that really bothers me is when people like 
slow mo clip something to prove that something happened. It's like, dude, the refs aren't seeing the slow mo version. You know that, right? Like this happened in real time. It's not going to be, it didn't happen. You didn't have four seconds and a slow mo with a yellow circle to be like, Hey, did you see that? Like, yeah, dude, I'm not interested in uh, second guessing officials with slow mo. I don't even like seeing it. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Let's get to the final thoughts on the game that probably a bunch of the people listening want to talk about. And uh, that's Donna Kelsey's big weekend. All right now, Mama Kels, Donna, man. She's Mama been Kels. on top of the fucking world, man. She's been on the move, man. It's cool seeing everyone follow Mama Mama Kels around and, uh, and show her all the love. Obviously, Sunday was the second time Mom has seen one of our games or both of our games in the same day, in one day. Whirlwind, celebrity-filled weekend, obviously, at the Eagles. It was probably the biggest celebrity that she saw all week. She sat next to Jake from State Farm uh, the entire game. And let me tell you, Jake is – that guy is a good neighbor. Not right now. Yeah, is this, this going to uh, be just everybody's, like, way to, you know, jump on jump on TV, just sit next to mom? I mean, it's been working. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm an advertiser, I am. Hey, how do Golly. we get something next to mom? I mean, gotta, she, New Heights got some. Mom. We need Mom's wearing the new Heights hat at the Eagles game. She is. She's repping. Repping hard. Maybe that's why her subscriber counts up. <laughs> Mom and Kels is walking billboard for new Heights, baby. And obviously, after the Eagles game, um, she makes a, she makes the car trip down to or up to MetLife Stadium for the yeah, Sunday night game. Baby. Chiefs versus the Jets. And uh, it looks like she had made it all of three steps out of the stadium before she is in her Travis Kelsey jersey. She had that thing in the fanny pack, man. Still in Philadelphia at the game and already has taken off my jersey. Thanks, Mom. Well, you guys won. You guys just won. On to the next one. On to the next one. Nice, Mom. I was thinking about going to. I don't. I don't. I hope you're not upset. I didn't go, but it was no, Wyatt's birthday, I'm... so just happy birthday, baby. Why? She loves the camera. You got her. She's let's go. A big fan. There's nothing cooler than a little kid going around sn snapping pics on a Polaroid. Did she take any yet? She has. We got a bunch of them lying around. She took a bunch at her birthday party Saturday. Nice. Uh, she was uh, Papa Papa Kels was uh, sitting with her, showing her how to work it. It was it was awesome. All right, Big Ed, getting in there. So Mom leaves the Eagles game and heads to East Rutherford, New Jersey, to watch the. Chiefs take on the Jets. It's Sunday night football, and she uh, has to slum it with some B-list celebrities. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. Hey, don't be chopping them down. Oh, so, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, second weekend in a row, she's in the booth with a uh, Grammy Award winner, Taylor Swift. Yeah. And uh, there were she brought some of her friends. Deadpool is in attendance. Ryan Reynolds, Blake Lively, Wolverine. Big Rye, man. You, you've, done, you've done something with Ryan before. Rob McElhaney's birthday birthday video. I did Rob McElhaney's birthday party. Um, he reached out about any Eagles really being involved with in that. I was happy to help. Nice. Uh, me and Rob love my guy Rob. See him in LA this week, probably at the game. Hopefully, okay. Let's get let's get right to it. Is the NFL overdoing it? What is your honest opinion? Not I think take away, I think everybody's take away just like overwhelmed your feelings with for Taylor. What is your honest <laughs> opinion on how the NFL is treating? Uh, celebrities at games. I think it's fun when they show uh, who all is at the game. You know, I think uh, I think it brings a little bit more to the atmosphere, brings a little bit more to to what you're watching. Um, but at the same time, I think uh, they're overdoing it. They're they're overdoing it a little bit for sure, especially my situation. Right. I think they're they're just trying to have fun with it, and um, a lot Here's of uh, a lot of the people watching. Go ahead, let's hear it. I just think the NFL is not used to celebrities coming to the games. Like basketball has to figure it out. They're all courtside. They're sitting there. They show them once or twice and then, and then they, but they get back to the game. The NFL is like, oh, look at all these A-list celebrities in the game. Keep showing them, show them, show them, show them. Dude, listen, you show them once, let them know they're there. Maybe after a touchdown, you get a little clip, but it, you can't, you can't be overboard with it. Yeah. People are there to watch the game, right? Yeah. They're not there to get thrown on TV. I'll tell you what though. It is, uh, cause you never know. You get caught, you know, just throwing a big old cheeseburger in and you look like an mm. idiot. You know what I mean? Like, there's certain things that you you just don't want to be on TV at all time, you know? Well, it was a lot. Not only was it a lot of the celebrities, but, dude, how many commercials have you done? Every commercial break, it was about seven commercials with Travis Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, we racked it up in the offseason. It was a busy <laughs> offseason. We racked it up. You still got, like, yeah. two more, too, we ladies and gentlemen, just in, just in case you, you still got at least one or two more coming. Got experience. I got the State Farm, my auto. 
Shout out to Pat for bringing me into that one. Yep, yep. Experian, who's now the uh, proud presenter of New Heights. That's right. Yeah, no, we got them all, man. We're in there. We got Dude, we got everyone you can think it's of. It's been a good. It's been a good offseason. Covered for, all. For, yeah, we've covered all T-Rav. national commercials. T Rav. <laughs> Don't be hating. Don't, Don't be, be hating. hating. More than 2 million female viewers. That's got to be an NFL record right there. Oh, shit. Damn. 2 million female viewers? How do you even calculate that? You, there's gender TVs? Like, how do That's you a good question. Fucking, how do you know? How do you, how do you even equate that? You just base it off of all the other things on that TV they watch, and it's, just, oh, yeah, it's definitely a female right here. Yeah. I guess what we do know is they're not going to slow down with it because this was the highest Sunday night viewed game that they've had in a while. 27 million viewers tuned in to watch Zach Wilson take on the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. I think a a few of them might have been there for uh, Deadpool and uh, uh, Taylor. (laughs) And Wolverine. And Wolverine. Dude, what else? I'm trying to think of what else Hugh Jackman's been in. I know The the Showman. The Showman. uh, The Greatest Showman. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an okay movie. I like it. Les Mis, which is more of a broad. I didn't watch it. I'm not gonna lie. I know. Uh, I know. Mom enjoyed it. She. Uh, I shot her a text. I didn't. No, I didn't get a chance to see her. So I shot her a text right after the game on the bus ride to the airport, and I was like, "Hey, mom, sorry I didn't get to catch you before I left, but uh, I hope you enjoyed the game. I appreciate you always trying to make it to both of our games. It's crazy. She's been making it to both of our sporting events." Since for a long I time. was five and started actually yeah. playing sports, so well, it's literally it, it, she's going on thirty years of making it to both of our events it in is. one day, and um, that's fucking it, commitment, ladies and gentlemen. That's yeah, what it, we're talking about when we say we have the best mother in the world because she, uh, even all the way to the NFL, when she could just sit there and watch the game on TV, she's still finding a way to to make it to the suite, man. So hey, shout out to hey, Mama Kells for coming through. She also told me thank you because she was in an alternate universe. She was sitting there with Deadpool and Wolverine and you <laughs> just, just just in a in a different world. And hey, that's um, where you're at, Mom. Exactly. You're in that category now. She's um, and then she got to see some Heights fellas uh, pull up. Who 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 from the Heights? Daily is there? Eli, Alex. Daily Gizzi, and Eli. Somewhere. Yeah, and then uh, Soup I. The soup himself, James Settle. Shout out to the Settles. James came up. Look at that, dude. We had a good crew. We had a good crew. Let alone, you know, Eric Jones and all my all my Heights fam that comes to every game they can. They cut to live shots of the suite throughout the game no less than 17 times. Damn, that's crazy. It's like once a drive. That's, I mean, that's more than Jack Nicholson on courtside with the Lakers. It was a hot ticket, man. I was saying that, that suite was rocking. They were enjoying themselves. Somebody um, told me that everybody was enjoying themselves in that suite. So, who said that? Mom. Mom told me. She Mom was like, that? "Oh my god, everybody was enjoying themselves. Everybody's having fun. That's what it's about, man. That's what football's about: hanging out with your friends, having fun, meeting Wolverine, you know, Deadpool, it. <laughs> like Lively. That's what that's what this game's about. <laughs> Maybe the craziest stat of this whole thing: ratings were partly pow- uh, powered by a spike in female viewership in the demographic. Of teenage girls, a 53% surge. How do they get this stat? How many stats do people just make up? Just fucking bogus. Just shit that, you know, like, show me how you got this stat. It's AI, Trev. Good point. In, maybe Instagram, maybe Snapchat releases it. All the, all the teenage girls Snapchat in the game. Exactly. There's got to be something like that that they're calculating this off of. I I just don't get it how you can just make yeah, Teenage girls don't even own TVs, do they? How would you know? <laughs> how do you know this? It's in the household? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, look at this. There was an eight times increase in uh, infants watching the game. <laughs> Babies were huge. Into- <laughs> Babies are really into this football game. Hey, whatever we got to do. Hey. <laughs> 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 there was a four times increase in dogs. Dog viewership is through the roof. <laughs> oh, man. All right. You can't make this shit up, man. Or you can. Catch all the games all season long at Buffalo Wild Wings. There's Mm. nothing like watching football at a sports bar, and Buffalo Wild Wings is the sports bar for football season. They have everything you need on game day, baby. Seriously, absolutely everything. Everything? They got to be missing something I need, Trev. I mean, I need a lot of things now. Yeah, you do. You're a man of need. Great (laughs) need. Um, But this is not the case, Jason. I can assure you, B-Dubs has everything. It has it all. Has all. All right. Well, so if so, you're telling me if I need wall to wall TVs, crispy, yep. juicy wings, mm. uh, with all 26 
beat up sauces and dry mm. rubs and a great beer selection. Uh, mm. You're saying Buffalo Wild Wings has all of these things? That is right. Stop being so naive, Jason. Plus, in addition to having all of that, it's fun to watch the games at a sports bar with your buddies or hey. even make new friends when you bond with strangers over an insane game winning <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> all right, now. Just a, oh, that connection. It's electric. Slapping hands with a stranger over some chicken wings and beer. I don't know what sounds better. All right. It's settled. You've convinced me. I know where I'll be watching all the games this season, and that's at my local B-dubs. Now, right now, 92%ers, make sure you get to your favorite Buffalo Wild Wings location to catch all the games all season long. If you know one thing about this show, it's that on occasion there's a giant dog behind me, and you've probably been wondering what the hell it is that I feed that dog, and the answer is simple. The Farmer's Dog. I also ask you what the fuck that thing even is sometimes. It's called an Irish Wolfhound. The Farmer's Dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. Mm. It's developed by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from real healthy ingredients to even human food standards. That's right. And my wife prefers they eat this over the gophers in the backyard. It's the best option for dogs in all stages of life because it's not kibble. It's not canned goo. It's just real healthy food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. So mm. get up to 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy dog food at thefarmersdog.com slash new heights. Plus, you get free shipping. Hey, just go to thefarmersdog.com slash new heights to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash new heights. Let's get back to other NFL storylines. Back to some football. Week four roundup. Let's give some quick thoughts on the biggest headlines from the rest of week four. Let's do it. But, yeah. Start with the Bills beating the previously unbeaten Dolphins. Not just the unbeaten Dolphins. What seemed like, I mean, the Titanic Dolphins. I mean, they just beat somebody by 70 points. <laughs> Damn near 50, but yeah. Only to turn around and lose 48-20 to the Bills. Josh Allen. Yeah, Holy that's... cow. Yeah, boy, Josh went the fuck off. Um, the score might have been 48-20, but without question, the highlight of the night was the return of DeMar Hamlin, uh, the safety that uh, obviously uh, went down. I forget what that medical uh, thing was called, uh, but obviously the incredibly scary moment last year when DeMar went down, his heart stopped, and yeah. nobody really knew what to expect, whether he'd be alive or Anything, and all of a sudden, a year later, he finds himself back on the football field. You want to talk about a feel-good story, man. That is fucking awesome. It's the best, man. Congrats, the brother. Best. So happy for you, for the whole organization, the team. I'm sure that that – I mean, dude, it's not surprising they win 48-20. That would have juiced me the fuck up to play some football. That would have juiced me the fuck up, too. Hell, yeah. Got to go out um, there and get that dub for my guy. Bills also won each of their last three games by at least uh, 28 points. So the uh, Josh Allen, you know, three picks in the first game or however many picks in the first game against the Jets and uh, finding a way to lose that game. He is back being Josh Allen, ladies and gentlemen. That was uh, he he tightened it up and he's uh, he's playing fucking lights out right now, as well as the uh, the entire Bills team is. Um, so. Shout out to the Bills, man. I mean, shout out to the Bills. Keep it moving, though. The Broncos get their first win of the season. All right. Finally got, hey, how about got that? a dub against the Bears, man. The Bears. Broncos climbed out of a 21 point hole. Comeback started with Sean Payton cutting the sleeves off his jacket. It's too fucking hot out here. Anybody got any scissors? What happened to just rolling them up? I don't yeah, know. Like he didn't like it. It was the scrunchies. So it probably. <laughs> do that. Oh, nah, cutting the off circulation to the fingers. Yeah. Like there you, you go. Need those. Should more coaches go suns out, guns out? I mean, the most iconic cut the sleeves off guy is Bill Belichick. Everybody knows that. Bill Belichick, yeah. I mean, he's done pretty good for himself. All right now. Now Sean Payton's cutting the sleeves off. We gotta we gotta get some sleeve cut. I, we gotta get Nick to wear a long sleeve shirt and cut the sleeves off. We gotta get on that. No, nah, I don't think Andy Reid is going for it. He wears the exact same thing, whether it's hot, cold, whatever. He's uh <laughs> he's no sleeves regardless. Or he's Big short red. sleeves. He's short sleeves. Should NFL coaches have to dress like players, like uh, like baseball managers? Like, should, should we be? I've always them thought that that's really weird. Shit? That baseball managers are in full on baseball pants. What are we doing? Everything. God, what world do we everything. need baseball managers and baseball pants? I don't know. 
the, that the is MLB, the weirdest thing to me. The MLB world. Could you imagine Andy Reid in some football pants there on the sideline? <laughs> come on, man. You have to come in my coach like that, dog. It's <laughs> fucked up, man. Can you imagine any coach in a fucking uniform? Like, don't hey, come in Dan Andy. Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell's going to look Dan pretty Campbell good. Dan Campbell can suit up right still. the fuck now. Yeah, you're right. Good point. Good point. Uh, oh, fuck. Shout out to Dan Campbell. The dude. Did you see it? Have you seen anything yet on the dude? Have you what seen you him yet? Have you made the... Uh, the correlation. Remember last time I said no, talking about no, Dan I, Campbell? I still don't see it. I still don't see it. But fuck you. The Cowboys bounced <laughs> back this week, beating the Patriots thirty-eight to three. Damn, they uh, they got they got cracked by uh, the Cardinals the week before and bounced back, man. Back to being the Cowboys. Gotta I'm not gonna love lie. that being I, in the same yeah. division. I expected this to be more of a game. The Patriots defense is I th- really good. Uh, so the fact the Cowboys beat them this handily, uh, dude. That's a hell of a bounce back for the Cowboys. Worst loss of Belichick's career. Yeah. Cowboys are for real this year, man. I think Mac Jones got benched as well. I think he got benched, unfortunately. I did see that. Hopefully Mac and the gang can get it going, man. Never hate, never love to see a guy go down. Um, Christian McCaffrey scores four touchdowns in the 49ers win over the Cardinals after the CMC. Cardinals just beat the, uh, the Cowboys. They come back and get cracked or smoked by the, uh, by the 49ers, 49ers. who seem like they are absolutely rolling right now. They are. Uh, the only 4-0 team besides, uh, who is it? Um, oh, the Eagles. Oh, yeah. yes. The Eagles are 4-0. Good for you guys, man. <laughs> Fucking guys. Top. McCaffrey, three rushes, th- three rushing TDs, one receiving TD and 177 yards from scrimmage. He was out there running. He was just out there fucking, give me the ball. I'm going to go run with it. Uh, could McCaffrey be the first running back to win MVP since Adrian Peterson? If he puts an entire campaign together, he's going to definitely have enough touches and touchdowns. Yeah. 100 percent man the guy's too good and their offense is just like i said it's it rolling right now it could legitimately happen if you look at shanahan offenses that style they give the running backs opportunities he is running out of his mind uh right now uh they got the offensive line to do it uh the system is there to get it done i could easily see mccaffrey having some insane stats this year and he's like adrian peterson you can't say a single fucking thing bad about mccaffrey you know what i mean he's just one of the this is one of the greatest, man. One of the greatest. What is fun to fucking watch. Just a good person off the field. Moving on to uh, Derrick Henry throws a TD pass against the Bengals. Bengals fall to the Titans 27 to three. My guy, Vrabes, Northeast Ohio football head coach over there in uh, Tennessee, finds a way to get the dub. And running back Derrick Henry throws his fourth TD pass of his career. Fourth? He's the throwing yeah. that many touchdown passes? Yeah, man. He's doing the Tebow jump pass to perfection. Uh, he's got the frame for it because he's so tall. Yeah. So he's got, well, a he's nice got the jump pass. Drop, he also right? has the he he also has the uh the toss, the toss. toss sweep pass. Yeah, the toss sweep, you catch it, run, then throw it over. The Tebow pass I'm talking about is uh, like you yes, go up I remember the gut this highlight. And the jump, yep. the jump pass. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This one he lined up in the Wildcat formation on third and goal. He rolled to his right and then delivered a jumping two yard pass to the tight end. Josh Wiley, Cincinnati Bearcat. How about oh. that, baby? I feel like a jabroni wearing this fucking jersey, man. Get this thing off me, man. <laughs> yeah, rookie Jay Wiley getting in the fucking end zone for his first tutty, and it came from Derrick Henry. That would be a fun stat to say for the rest of your life, man. Um, Henry I'm told himself, right go now. be Peyton Manning when Dan Hill uh, relayed the play call to him. Dude, you see what they did? I'm watching the clip right now. No, I actually didn't. So they're motion out, quarterback leaves. They're in a four-by-one formation. And Wiley's on the backside, and they forget that he's eligible, it looks like. Like, nobody's guarding him. I guess it's because there's nobody in zero who's responsible for the quarterback, right? Which quarterback? The quarterback that's lining the up The actual behind. quarterback. Like, when you think of, like, a zero red zone defense, nobody has the quarterback, right? Like, you're blitzing the quarterback. Yeah, the quarterback's the only one. If the running back leaves, comfortable. there's one other person usually that has the running back in coverage. So when they burst a wildcat – one of the zero guys that had the tight end on that side had to leave with the quarterback. So now nobody is responsible for the tight end. Is that what happened, you think? It sounds like it's it's just they, they had a tick on being able to get, you know, the defense in a position where they had to communicate and they just didn't communicate it very well. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. Good old window dressing, as I like to call it. You know what I'm saying? Just throw that shit up there and make them have to figure that shit out. Just It looks real nice. It looks real nice when you do it right. Got good carpenters down there in uh, in Tennessee. Nah, right, nah. 
ESPN Plus broadcasts a Toy Story version of Falcons Jags. I don't, yeah, did you man, see this? I thought that was pretty cool. The AI. It's pretty yeah. cool. It's also kind of scary. AI is a little bit scary, right? Like, how can, that can do that live? That's what I think happened. It was like all that, done I don't think live. that's AI. I think it's just a simulcast. I don't think it's AI. Well, how would they get the players to look like Toy Story characters live? AI, AI creates shit on its own. That's that was what just it a did. simulcast. No, 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 no. This was the players were like. Full I'm not smart on. enough to even argue this. So whatever well, it is, it was cool. I enjoyed it. Well, the game took place in Andy's room and featured uh, the main Toy Story characters. It had a claw that came down to spot the ball. Yeah, a slinky right dog now. serving as the chain gang. Nice. Uh, some of the Toy Story broadcasts were the B. John Robinson juke, of course. That they had the highlights. Uh, yeah, took no. the world by storm. Trevor Lawrence had flames coming out of his shoes on a twenty-two yard scramble. It's NFL blitz style. That was the one I saw. That was pretty cool. Did you see the uh, the Jaguars touchdown celebration? I did not. Ooh, that was a good, good? one. Yeah, because you do? know they're all there. Everybody's alive. Everybody's alive. And then when there's people around, you got to act like a toy again. So like when Andy walks in the room, everybody like falls to the ground, like they're just like. A toy not being played with. Is that what they did? That was a pretty good one. That's good. That's really that good. good one. You got to see it. You got to see it. Smart way to play into it, man. I do think, though, if, if the goal was to get kids behind this, I'm surprised that they went with Toy Story and not Bluey or Paw Patrol. You got to understand. Toy Story will forever be for kids. Trav, you got to understand. I got kids. All right. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. They don't like Toy Story? It's okay, but it ain't nowhere on the level of Bluey or Paw Patrol. Like it ain't even in the same. There's just more. There's just. I feel like there's just more content for Bluey in them, so they like to see more of it. Newer, the animation is better than what was on Toy Story, especially the original. You think the animation in Bluey is better than the Toy Story animation? Go back and watch the original Toy Story. If you haven't seen it in a while, go back and watch the original Toy Story. It was great, groundbreaking for its time. It is nowhere even close to what they're doing now with animation. All right, I guess. I'll take your word for it, Dad. <laughs> hey, if it would have been Bluey, uh, I think all of my kids would have lost their goddamn minds with a bunch of dogs playing football uh, on a field. Maybe that's why they did do Toy Story, because they couldn't nail that level of animation live. Anyway, whatever. If you guys could be any animated character in an alternate broadcast of your games, what would you be? A little... Another no dumb question. If I could be any animated character, man, the animated character I've always assimilated the most with and the one that I've loved the most and the one that I pick every time I'm playing a Mario game, motherfucking Donkey Kong. Toad? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going DK, baby. That's a fucking good one. That's a pretty good one. Who am I going with? Yeah. What are you going with? Gosh, you got me thinking of Mario characters now. Um Animated so characters. Yeti, are there an- animated yetis. We got Zeus. It could be Hercules. Uh, Ooh, Hercules was a good one growing up. What's your favorite animated movie? God damn, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna need a list of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need a search bar. I can, and- I can give it to you right now. You got, you got Jungle Book. Uh, all the ones when we were growing up. You got Jungle Book, Lion King, Robin Hood with uh, the wolf as Robin Hood with all the other animals playing all the other characters. I mean, Shrek has got to be a good one. I'd say Shrek. That's about Shrek? as big yeti as it gets. Shrek's good. Shrek would yeah. be good. Yeah. Ooh, Beauty and the Beast. There you go. I can be the beast. I would have thought you would have said like Lion King right away or something like that. I mean, I do love a fucking, I love Lion King. It's a classic. Jungle, Jungle Book was always my favorite growing up. More modern ones. Dude, my two favorites, Coco and Moana. Let's go throw it out there. Those are my favorites that I watch with the girls. I don't think Coco, Aladdin is good. God, I love Aladdin. Aladdin's a good one. I love watching it with Aladdin too because they get, the girls get scared when uh, Aladdin and uh, Abu are in the uh, looking for uh, the lamp, and then Abu touches the forbidden treasure, <laughs> gets him every time. <laughs> Aladdin was great. I forgot about Aladdin, and we've been watching it a bunch recently. Kylie keeps asking me, "Why do you keep putting on Aladdin?" I'm like, "Because it's a fucking good movie." Yeah, Kai, what are you putting on, Kai? <laughs> That's all I got for you. I don't know. That's a good animated movie. Um, it was South Park, the movie. That was a good one. Dude, we go adult animated movies? Team America. Team World America. Police. I guess that's not, that's not animated. That's, that's, <laughs> it's uh, definitely animated. What, whatever it's called. Uh, puppetry. You, all right. You're right. It's got to be at least partly animated, though, right? Like, you can't all just be. Ooh, Monsters, Inc. That's another, that's another big Yeti Monsters reference. Inc. was good. Sully. Yeah. Sully would be a good ball player. Sully would be a good ball player. I don't know if he'd Mike be Wazowski, good Mike Wazowski, not but... so much. 
What would Mike, Mike Wazowski be a kicker? You got one eye. He's got a big foot, too. It might be pretty good. Ooh, you remember Roger the Rabbit? Fuck. That's, an, I mean, that was a great movie. Partly animated. That's like yeah. a half and half one. Half and half. I don't think I've ever been more sexually attracted to a cartoon. I ain't watched that in a fucking minute. I'm going to have to fucking watch that. Catch up on Roger the Rabbit, man. I haven't watched that in a while. The Simpsons. Simpsons. Were you a big Simpsons guy? We weren't. We were more South Park in the household. Yeah, we were South Park growing up. Celebrity death match. <laughs> I, will say, I will say there are not many like more on point culturally um, like specific shows than Simpsons or South Park. Like some of those episodes where they make fun of like what's happening current event style. Is unbelievable. Those guys are family freaking guy. hilarious. Oh my gosh, you can't. I'm a Family Guy kid my, for the rest of my life. You could throw on Family Guy and I'll sit there and fucking Family Guy just was roll. big for a little bit, but then it just became the same thing every single episode, I feel like. No, I'm not going to let you do that to me. All right, fair enough. All righty, let's get to the stamps of the week. Now we hand out a couple of stamps to the guys who took their game to new heights in week four of the NFL season. New Heights Stamp of the Week is brought to you by our favorite metabolism-boosting, zero-sugar-having beverage, Accelerator Ooh. Active Energy Drink. <laughs> Just when you think we weren't going to find a way to get it in the show. It's here. It's, it's here at the very here. end of it, baby. How Keeping it is going that? strong. I'll start it off with my pick. Shout out to Texans rookie quarterback, C.J. Stroud from the Ohio State. Man, my dog is balling, man. He's playing... Uh, having the best start to uh, any rookie career at quarterback, uh, C.J. Stroud passes for 306, two tutties, no interceptions in the Texans' 30-6 to win over the Berg. Hey! Stroud now has 1,200 yards passing uh, this season, surpassed Andrew Luck for the second most passing yards ever by a player uh, in his first four career games. Only Cam Newton. Hey, fuck. He's that's some, some good, good company, company right to now. be in right there. Only Cam Newton is the only one that's had more at 13 uh 86. That is 1,386 yards. Yeah, Stroud hasn't thrown a pick. He's the second quarterback in the NFL history, the entire history of the league, to have no interceptions in each of his first four career starts. What? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty crazy. Joining 2019's Gardner Minshew. These guys know how to take care of the ball. How about that? Shout out to CJ Strouds for taking his game to new heights, baby. I met him, met him up in Cleveland uh, when he was in college, and I'll tell you what, man, he surprised me with how tall he is. Like the guy, he must have been playing around like seven footers in college because he was every bit of like six four, six five when I met him. Okay. And I didn't, right. I didn't realize he was that big. Got some life um, to him. Yeah, but he's making right. great decisions over there, and he's. I'll tell you what, man, he's showing some life to a Texans team that I'm. I don't know if everybody had the expectations uh, where they're at right now, but he's got that team rolling, man. Shout out to D'Amico Ryan, too, man. Not only the Texans players are starting to take notice, the Texans fans. I don't know if you've seen this, but this, have you seen the Stroud boys? They're starting to take over. Are we Stroud boys? Are we I mean, Stroud I, boys? I think I'm a Stroud boy, man. I'm, hey. I'm all for him. I'm all for him going out there and balling, man, <laughs> representing the OH like that. All right. For my pick, I, I mean, I got to go with Khalil Mack. Six Dude. sacks in one game? That's a dangerous man right there. I mean, what are we doing? That's a dangerous man. How many sacks man. does he have to have before you start like not Triple letting him, him get a sack? Like, What are we doing here? You just start rolling out, rolling out the other way every play. Whatever you got to do, you can't let somebody get six sacks. I mean, what the fuck are we doing? Six sacks. The record in the league is like 23. He's already a fourth of the way there after one game. I mean, that is unbelievable. That's fucking wild. You think you get to like three and they're like, all right, we're, we're going to put a tight end next to this guy the entire time. At the end of the day, you got to fucking, you got to fucking, I mean, we got to bow up. We got to bow up, boys. Whoever it is, we got to bow the fuck up. We got to find a way. Hey, we got to help. We got to help him out, but we got to find a way. Well, they weren't helping him out if he had six sacks. <sighs> I mean, what do we do? Bro, I got to see the plays. Maybe they were chipping him and he's fighting through. Dude. He had six sacks. The Seattle Seahawks on Monday night had fucking. It was a lot. 11 sacks. It was a lot. S did they set the record? Did they tie the record? I forget what it was, man. Either way, though. That's the Seahawks, fuck, that's I don't know. Nuts. They had a lot. Khalil set the single game franchise record, obviously, with six sacks for the Chargers. He might have that fucking record for three teams at this point. He might have been a little bit more fired up playing the Raiders. Is the most sacks a player has had against their former team. Um, since it became an official stat. 
1982. No other player has had a game against their former team like Khalil Mack just had. Um, that's some. That's that's taking your game to new heights if I've ever heard it, baby. And if six sacks isn't enough, he also had ten tackles and two forced fumbles. <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> that's not funny. I got to play the guy twice. I Fuck. just don't understand why, dude. Listen, I know. Yeah. <laughs> just gonna let the guy ruin the game? That's demoralizing, man. He is a game wrecker. Shout out to Khalil for taking his game to new heights, baby. This is what happens if I'm the tackle. First sack, coach, I got to be better. I'm sorry, man. Dude, I'll get it next time. I promise you, I got him. Take us through it. What about the second one? Second sack, fuck. This guy's really good. I don't know, man. I don't know if I can do this. Third sack, I am furious. What the fuck are we doing? Why are we just letting this guy get running? Like, what are we doing, coach? I'd be furious you know, on the tackle. What if I he would was? Be so mad. Dude, what if he was, you know what I mean, getting help and he was still finding a way? Dude, Khalil Mack. There's no a, chance. There's a this dude had fuck. six sacks fighting through chips. In, in you no don't chance. know that, dude. You ever played against that guy? It. Fuck, that guy can get through a chip. I'll tell you what. When it's one guy, that just blows my mind that you're going to let one person have that kind of stat line. It is astronomical. That's what. That's why I'm over here like, dude, there's no way they weren't chipping him or doubling him. The quarterback must have just been held. Like, dude, I just don't. I can't see it happening like that. But All right. I'd love to watch the clips right now, but I think it's time for us to go for this one. We'll get to the clips on Khalil's six-sack game uh, coming up uh, on the Friday episode that is going to get released. That will preview our upcoming opponents. All right. Now. Um, but right now, this episode's Done. That's a wrap. Bonito. That's what I say. Spicy meet the ball. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube to the New Heights channel so you know when all the new episodes are coming out. And make sure also to check out this bonus video where we're going to watch uh, Khalil Max record-breaking six-set game and get into our opponents exclusively on our YouTube page this Friday. We'll be previewing our Week 5 matchups, other Week 5 matchups, and maybe play some clips. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. All right, now, once again, New Heights is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment, and this episode has also been presented by the all-new Experience Smart Money Debit Card. Hey! That's right, the debit card that builds credit without the debt. Make sure you get yours over at Experian. Follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one S, and thank you to our production and crew for deleting all the shit that would get us canceled. We love you guys. Thank you to the 92 percenters for always tuning in. Oh! Na na na, we'll see y'all Friday. Peace.